YouTubers, just thought I'd uh, bring you a little bit of an overview of uh, the Savion. It's very late here, it's uh, yeah, as you can see there, 11.38pm, I've had a few dramas with it. Um, first of all, the install didn't go as smoothly as expected, I actually thought it was going to go fine, even if it was a little bit lengthy. Um, uh, I think it really took about 30 minutes for it to install, which is kind of getting in the lengthy side for a modern Linux, uh, Linux distro, GNU plus Linux distro. Um, the other thing too is that right at the end, uh, when it should have been installing Grub and all that sort of thing, it uh, seemed to have failed to install Grub on the uh, the right hard drive, um, and uh, and it was unbootable. So I had to uh, coax uh, Debian to actually use its um, uh, instance of Grub two uh, to uh, to boot uh, Sabian, which I did. So um, I also uh, once I got in here, I uh, found the um, uh, LightDM uh, to be quite bland. Uh, they use like the even though we're using KDE as you can see here KDE workspace is uh, plasma 5 I think it's called or plasma workspace is 5 um, it was actually quite bland it has the uh, same background or similar background um, and uses light DM which is fine uh, but nonetheless it looked a little bit bland um, looking at this now I uh, actually had some difficulty also getting audio to record and not entirely sure why I haven't really worked out why but I managed to somehow coax that to get to work so uh, overall not a, a sort of a beginner friendly. This happens to be uh, version 2016.2 uh, uh, um, so uh, yes let's go and take a look at the uh, the Savion website and actually find a little bit of, about what it's all about so so uh, Savion anyway is a, I think it's an Italian dessert Actually, there you go, 16.02. I said 16.2 before, but to, in the interest of semantics, we'll say 16.02. So, um, yeah, basically, rolling release, uh, you can get, I think, um, what was it, uh, daily or monthly um, generated releases. I think, as you say, it's a, as I say, it's a rolling release. It's using Plasma 5 there. It looks like they have uh, some images for Raspberry Pi. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but they do have a pledge uh, there, which I won't be doing today. Um, but you, if you use it, then uh, feel free to. Uh, it looks like they've got Vagrant, which means you can just sort of mig migrate a, um, an environment quite quickly, and Docker as well. Um, native NVIDIA and AMD, okay, so, um, yeah, uh, when they say proprietary, I, my experience actually at the start of this is it's um, using the Radeon to KO driver, so if I go LSMod. Uh, grab uh, Radeon, you'll notice that it has that, and if I go uh, FGLRX or any of the like, I do not see, and I don't know, what about this AMD GPU, well, no. Nah. So, yeah, uh, not doing that, we have, um, not oh, Geeky, <laughs> the option to turn it Geeky, uh, Gentile system or whatever, look, so it is based on Gento, um, so yeah. Um, I did find the package, I, I, I went and typed nah, packages in here before and just found that a little bit weird, it wants to take me straight to there rather than you know, suggest anything and I guess uh, I was lucky that I remembered something about entropy and yeah, and I, I was able to uh, find the equo uh, package manager, so I'll just show you a, a, a quick one with that. Um, search uh, what do I have? Uh, GLRX, I don't know if it's going to help me. Uh, AMD drivers, it's probably called. AMD driver, no, oh, this is getting all horrible at the list. Okay, and then we end up finding, no, that's something else completely. So it's not very good either. Um, well, uh, we, we can uh, well, let's just do them, and then we can find a whole bunch of. Anyway, you can search for things and you can install them and that. Um, it uses systemd. We can prove that by doing this. So we can see uh, that PID one is indeed systemd. So uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is just take you a little bit around the desktop. I've installed uh, one or two helper applications, but they're really here for my purposes of recording this and making sure that the production is decent. So um, yep, so we've got uh, the VLC player, we've got Google Chrome, which is an interesting choice. A lot of distros are still using uh, Firefox. You saw Google Chrome come up before when I looked for packages. 
um, we have this, you know we have the uh, typical KDE applications for uh, chatting on IRC and also file management there we have the terminal uh, the console there and we have system settings I'll just bring that up yeah so an integrated system settings there so you can have a look at that sometime and this will just be a quick review anyway well, not even a quick review I don't know if you'd call it a review I might give it a score at the end um, but um, yep so we've got the um, development tools there some games uh, I'll let you go through that I'm not going to go through all of the games there I'm going to look only at the important points so we're using the Gwenview KDE image viewer so you can just have a look at that and view your uh, pictures I don't have any pictures on this at the moment typically I install these things and then go straight back to LFS <laughs> but uh, yeah um, so there's a screen capture program, you can just capture a screen, you know, just bang like that. Oh, actually, no, I'm just capture I'll take a new stuff, go like this, and save, and you can that, and that will enable me actually to use Gwenview. Now, that's a bit weird, it's wanting to keep my mouse there, graphics, and uh, Gwenview, and can we find it? Home, and we can, and we can see it, yes. That looks nice, ish. Not so much on the grey theme, really. It's a lot of grey going on here. So, yeah, it's hardly hardly a uh, Linux Mint going on here. Uh, yes, internet applications. We have Steam. I haven't run Steam yet, but we'll accept the license. You know, it's not a it's not a open source program. And here we go. It's going to download that, and I'm not going to let it do that. Let's cancel that. So yeah, uh, so it does have Steam installed by default, which is an interesting choice to include a proprietary application. A lot of distros are uh, quite reticent to do that. Um, so I went. Oh, we got Copy, which is like your uh, uh, Qt equivalent of Pigeon kind of um, dialer tool, which I don't know in Australia. That's not going to be used very often, really. Um, network. Okay, I'm not going to use that to attach. I'm actually tried. I tried using NFS before and failed uh, abysmally. Let me see if I managed to get that to mount at all. Yeah, I never got it to. Never got it. To, I did the typical settings that I, I use uh, in uh, LFS and others, but uh, it just didn't work. So I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. I did start the services, uh, even though it was a little bit weird to do that. It, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, and we've got Conqueror, the web browser, it's kind of interesting as well because we've got two uh, web browsers there, but clearly uh, Google Chrome will be the leading one there while uh, you can use uh, Conqueror as a bit of a, a backup one. Uh, what's this? Let's have a look. I just yeah, I didn't even... oh, here it is. No. I didn't even start. What's that? I want to find out what that is. Internet SSH add. So SSH add. Let's find out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it looks like it's a way of adding a uh, an ID to the SSH known. Known hosts or something like that. Not the known hosts, but the RSA set of keys. But I'm not really sure. Anyway, that's a, that's a Linux man page for it. But uh, it seems to be some strange GUI sitting there that doesn't seem to want to uh, come to the party. Anyway, let's go back to here. We'll get rid of that. Just I find that very distracting. So let's go back to the desktop. Um, yeah, so, internet, and that's it for that one. Um, what about Office? What have we got? Ah, we've got Ocular, but we do not have LibreOffice, which is kind of curious. I guess that gives us an opportunity to, um, add, add it. So, we'll just go sudo, so, and, uh, oh yes. And then we'll just go here. 
install LibreOffice. Let's see how that goes. Yep, and uh, we'll just choose three. Oh, two. Fine. Whatever. So it seems to be going away and grabbing some things from the Debian mirror or whatever. So, yep, just let that do its thing. Has it downloaded everything it needs to? No, it's going to go and do a bunch of things, so we'll let it do that while we investigate the rest of it. So we've got a whole bunch of links and things by the looks of it. Yeah, and it's just taken, uh, taken us there. So I think there are a whole bunch of Subin related links there. Uh, settings, again, configure printers. Again, I always repeat it, but I'll say it again. Use cups the CUPS way of doing things, which is localhost 631 or whatever server you're doing it on, 631 being the port, um, system, and then yeah, you can do manage the, and that's going to just take us there anyway, localhost 631 as you can see. So going back to the settings, yeah, no, yes, no, <laughs> where was I? It's getting very, very late here. No, I didn't want to do that. So, uh, setting system. Ah, oh, system, that's right. Uh, we got K3B in here, which I would have thought it would be in multimedia. Maybe I missed multimedia. Ah, oh, I just missed it. And the Clementine music player, I haven't seen that. We've got Cody M Media Center. I'm not going to pull that up because that will do a whole, um, whole full screen thing there. Let's have a quick look here. Clementine? I haven't used Clementine before. What's Clementine about? Clementine... Media player. Music player. Let's have a look at that. And... Let's have a look at the screenshot. Seems pretty clean. It looks like they're running this on Windows. But it seems pretty clean. Even if it has a few weird icons going on there. Well, weird in my opinion, and probably no one else's. And here it is. Although the icons look a little bit different, a little bit, uh, it, it seems to be theme compliant, which is great. So I don't know much about it, but, oh, it's about QT, I don't want to look at about QT, about Clementine. You can see a whole bunch of authors there. Is it recent? Let's go back. 1.2.3. And I think that was the version that I found before. So yeah, very current. So uh, yeah, we'll get rid of that. I'm not going to play any songs on that. I suggest you go and take a look. It's a little bit unusual. I, I haven't seen that on a uh, on a distro before. And I installed it MPV. It doesn't come by default. So I I do that for testing the uh, the screencast. So utilities. Yeah. So a fair few. What about this? screen magnifier. Hmm. I don't know. Ah, uh, is it under mouse? I think it's just showing me. But it's, I don't know how this works. Hmm. I feel incompetent. I don't even know how this thing works. Stop. Start. No. Stop. Start. Oh. Ah, uh, there we go. Yes. Success. So that's how it works. Bit of accessibility going on there for you. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Scientific calculator. I love the Calc. Always have. Ever since the good old... 3.5.9 days of KDE. It's got a nice scientific calculator going on there. Quite simple. Remember the good art does actually. Going in here, configure KCOG, uh, colors, and the background. It used to be kind of like this. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but it was kind of like a greeny sort of color like that. I remember it was good. So, but that's a little bit of a distraction I get sidetracked a little so as I say I digress so anyway um, yeah I had a little bit of difficulty with this this thing um, so 
it's I think it's attractive mostly because of the KDE uh, going on. I'm just waiting for this to uh, install. So it's taking a little while to get LibreOffice installed. Hopefully that'll be done. Or maybe I can entertain you for a few moments. Let's have a look at the wallpapers. Uh, folder view settings. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I I've learnt. Yes. So you got that savvy on default wallpaper there and we can just change the wallpaper there that looks kind of pretty what about this no that's too goofy you got the old wallpapers old KD wallpapers yeah and that's a current one isn't it or very similar to the current one you might expect and there's an older one too much grey too much grey we'll go back to this yeah so, let's see if that managed to get 31 seconds. I think we can wait for that. So it seems to have done a few bits and bobs here. Oh, by the way, I actually had to install this here, just for my... Like, not install it, but, you know, just uh, assign it. You can just assign it using add widgets, just like that. It's very attractive now. This is looking a little bit out of place, isn't it? I think I might close that. It's a little out of place with all this greyness, and then you've got a little bit of splash of colour there. So let's see how long it takes to install LibreOffice once it's done its thing. As far as the package management's concerned, I haven't had any dramas with it. It seems to do its thing. But, uh, yeah, not having it boot by default. And not have uh, Grub installed. I presume that's because it uh, bugged out somewhere in its Python script, the Python script installer that it uses. So, yeah, that was a bit of a shame. So, I might, um, I'm, I'm thinking of trying uh, the other spins. I did download uh, the GNOME spin uh, just to, to see. Another thing, yeah. Another thing is, uh, they've, they've got a few other spins there too, like the XFC. I noticed if I just, I, I, I got it from my bra um, my ISP. So mirror dot. Uh, oh, here we go. I don't want that. I just grab that. And I just, and I went. So it's clearly popular enough that they've got their, uh, you know, monthly. Um, yeah, I just downloaded it here. here. They, they've got a lot of distributions, of, like a lot of spins of it. Even a Mate spin. So, I kind of seem to remember it looking very pretty at one stage. But maybe that's not the, the thing they're going for. There's a lot going on here for... Installing it and considering it's considering we're using the binary way, it's it's kind of surprising because I, I think with Debian it would be very very quick. It looks like it's installing the liberation fonts, which usually come with a distro. The liberation fonts were donated uh, by Red Hat many years ago now uh, as a free one. So I think they've had to withdraw. One of the monospace fonts or something like that. Uh, because of, uh, I think, a copyright concern over the font font face. So, but that was very nice of them to do that, to give us uh, the equivalent of the Microsoft, or some of the, uh, three of the Microsoft core fonts. I think um, Times, New Roman, uh, Courier and uh, Arial equivalents. So, hopefully, ah, oh, here we go, it's unpacking. And this, this is a pretty recent version of LibreOffice. Uh, if I, let's have a look at the LibreOffice, I did install it the other day, but I didn't pay attention to everything about it. LibreOffice. And uh, yeah, so we've got the release candidate, the stable release. Yeah, so it's kind of reasonably recent. So that's done now. 
So let's see now that we've got a populate, hopefully, a populated. Yeah, those nice icons actually. Nice icons. I don't know if that's what comes with KDE by default or if it's a Sabby on edition, but nice. I imagine it's probably from KDE. We'll click on that, and they've got a nice custom splash there, and uh, yeah. So you can definitely. Uh, have your LibreOffice there. Anyway, um, that's enough from me. I just thought I'd take you through this and and uh, you know explore this myself. Uh, very disappointed with the how much wrangling I had to do. Probably not beginner friendly, and I don't know if they really are. I mean, they did say they're talking about you know um, you can change it into a geeky gentle install, but it was geeky enough. Um, having to uh, reconfigure uh, the, uh, the actually the Debian grub to bootloader to boot this thing. Uh, not that I, I'm troubled by that at all, but um, I don't think this is for the average user. So uh, yeah, anyway, uh, for what it does, you know what? I'll probably give it a six and a half. It's a Linux distro. It's competent in the packages it has, I guess. Uh, didn't have uh, mplayer, which I find a little surprising, you know, in the repository by default. But nonetheless, it's it's reasonable, I guess. Yeah, you, you, once you get things up and running. So, anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. Please remember to like and subscribe, uh, and please comment below. There have been not many comments. I want to encourage you to uh, to comment on the get, get talking with each other. So, anyway, catch you guys. Have a good night or whatever you have.